Hi guys, in this example we're going to be talking about a hypothesis test concerning means using paired samples. Now, just as a brief review, what is a paired sample? Well, a paired sample is, are two samples for which each observation in one sample is paired in a meaningful way with a particular observation in the second sample. So things like pre, post, treatment, fall under this kind of guise. Now, let's talk a little bit about the example that we have. Uh, this example right here, and here's the data, shows the time to exhaustion for bicyclists, for nine bicyclists, after drinking chocolate milk and a carb replacement drink. So, for example, here's cyclist two. Cyclist 2 was given chocolate milk, then rode his or her bike until they were exhausted, and it took 47.08 minutes till exhaustion. Then, perhaps on another day, on a, starting fresh, they were given this carb replacement drink, and they rode their bicycle. That same cyclist rode his or her bicycle to exhaustion, and that took 50.1 minutes. And so we have nine cyclists. Each of them went through both of these kind of tests. And we've recorded the data. And that's why this is paired, because these two observations are connected in a meaningful way to this cyclist. OK? Cyclist one, for example. All right? So we have nine observations in total here. And the question is right here. So let's see what uh, our objective is here. Is there sufficient evidence to suggest that the mean time to exhaustion is greater after chocolate milk than after carbohydrate replacement drink? Use a significance level alpha of 0.05. So first thing we should do is to give chocolate milk the subscript 1 and carb replacement group 2 this is going to help us th this is going to help us later when we use subscripts mu1 and mu2 in our hypothesis statements and so forth to identify the groups instead of having to rewrite chocolate milk and carb replacement over and over again okay so basically what we want to see is that the mean as in the words of this question right here of chocolate milk which is mu1 that's why I did this labeling this group one clearly is greater than mu two. Okay, so that's pretty much what we have uh, the task in front of us. Okay, so before we uh, jump in and do the calculations and so forth, in paired uh, hypothesis tests for the means, what we do is we create this difference column. Okay, so because these observations of 50.48 and 42.9 are paired to this cyclist, we can create this third variable, d or difference, which is basically just going to be a subtraction of the first group from the second, or the first, uh, first measurement from the second. Okay, just keeping in mind that what I did was a group one minus group two. Okay, so as you can see here, we were given this little uh, extra bit of information that we should use mu one minus mu two. It wouldn't really matter if you did this in reverse either. Okay, as long as you stay consistent. Okay, so let's continue. So we did 50.48 minus 42.9, and then we're just going to drag this down so we could do it for the rest of these rows. Okay, so we've created this new uh, variable, so to speak, called the difference. Okay, and now we want to make a hypothesis statement, which essentially is going to capture this. Is mu1 greater than mu2? 
that's what we're asking so our null hypothesis is almost always that mu of the difference sorry let me write this bigger mu of the difference variable which is this guy right here is equal to zero which is saying let me write it in other terms that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero okay but we write it the first way with mu d okay so mu1 minus mu2 equals zero is saying essentially that chocolate milk and carb replacement drink have exactly the same mean effect on the time to exhaustion okay so basically that there's no difference between the two that's the null hypothesis now the alternative is that we actually want to test which is in this question here we read the alternative H A H 1 uh, however your text or professor writes it uh, is that the difference is greater than zero now why how did I get greater than zero well let let me pull this down here and break it out into mu ones and mu twos we just said that what we want to test is that if mu of the chocolate drink is greater than mu of the carb replacement drink and I'm getting the greater I'm getting that from right here is there sufficient evidence to suggest that the mean time to exhaustion is greater after chocolate milk remember chocolate milk was group one so hence mu one is greater than mu carbohydrate uh, drink okay then I convert this to I do a little subtraction a little manipulation here and I get mu1 minus mu2 is greater than 0 right and then finally what is mu1 minus mu2 but mu d right we did this guy minus this guy to get this guy and if we repeat this over and over what we're talking about is mu d this is a d over here yeah. it's greater than zero so we went from here we went from understanding the question to here to here and finally to here where we get our hypothesis statement and let me put a box around there because there's a lot of stuff around the null hypothesis is that the difference is zero the drinks have no difference uh, the, the mean time to exhaustion is equal in both with both drinks versus the alternative that the difference is greater than zero which is essentially saying that chocolate milk has a greater mean time to exhaustion than carb replacement drink okay and once we have this statement clearly set out we just also kind of should always include our level of significance with that statement so let me kind of box this in as well and that is uh, a appropriate hypothesis statement for this example okay for the objective of this example now let's get to actually doing the the, the work okay so what we need to get is the mean specifically of the <coughs> difference variable we just created so this is the sample mean right so you could call this um, mean specifically sample mean x bar right we need 
x bar, we also need the sample standard deviation or s of this same uh, difference variable. So that is achieved by std ev dot s. That's sample standard deviation. Okay. So once we have both of these, we realize that we don't know what sigma is, so we must use a t-test statistic, right? So this guy right here is x bar d. And this guy right here, if you allow me to write it on this side, is s, lowercase s, subscript d. OK? So we've essentially made a two variable or two sample situation uh, and reduced it into a one sample situation. And it's very similar to a, a one sample t-test. Our test statistic is a t-test statistic because we don't know what sigma is. So sigma unknown, right? So we can't use a z-test statistic. And we're going to have x bar d minus the hypothesized value, which was, if you recall from the null hypothesis, was 0. OK, over the sample standard deviation of the difference column, the square root of the sample size. And by the way, the sample size is 9, right? OK, so all for, for all the, uh, for, for most examples, I should say, the hypothesized value is going to be 0 in these scenarios. And that's because typically we're interested in, is there a difference? And then in what direction is that difference? OK, so if you recall from HO, the null hypothesis was that mu d equals 0. And you know in hypothesis testing, once you begin to do the test, you assume that the null hypothesis is true. OK, so this guy reduces to 0. And this guy is coming from here. This guy is coming from here. And the sample size is 9. OK, so let's just fill this all in. You let Excel do the work. OK, so let's also explicitly put our sample size so we could use the count function. So just a little Excel help. Uh, degrees of freedom here is going to be n minus 1. So essentially, this reduces to a, something very similar to a one sample t test. And our t test statistic is going to equal, just as I placed over here, x bar d divided by, in the denominator, we're going to have the sample standard deviation of the difference variable divided by the square root, sqrt, of the sample size. Make sure we open and close the correct number of parentheses, hit enter, and we get a test statistic of 1.99 roughly <coughs> okay and so really there's one thing left for us to do and that is to get a p-value and recall that this is a t distribution at least under the null hypothesis with eight degrees of freedom so this is t subscript eight the t distribution here is centered at zero our uh, test statistic was somewhere off on this tail on the right side of this of the zero, clearly. And uh, our alternative hypothesis really defines which tail of rejection, or how many tails, I should say, we have of rejection. So it was mu d is greater than zero. So this also has a mnemonic point. It's like an arrowhead pointing to the tail of rejection. So clearly, rejection is going to be on the larger tail, OK? On the uh, positive side 
of the of the distribution. Okay, so our p value uh, will be uh, the probability of getting a test statistic as large or as extreme or more extreme than 1.99 given HO is true. That's basically the definition of a p-value and in this case the test statistic of ours is 1.99 so basically what I'm shading here is going to be equal to our p-value. Okay, So this is a visual if, if visuals help. Okay. This is a one-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis dictates that there's an inequality. We do not need to go shading on the other side as well. All right. So all we got to do is get this area. So you can use your tables if you have tables in the appendix of your textbook. Or in this case, since we're doing this all on Excel, we're just, we have one last step to do. And let's use a function that's in Excel Okay, to do this. So we get to the p-value. There is a function called tdist. Okay, there's if you have newer versions of Excel, there's also other options. tdist dot two t two tail, tdist dot right tail, and so forth. I'm going to use just tdist because this is the older one, and this will be compatible with older versions of Excel. The first argument is the test statistic. The second argument is your degrees of freedom. And the third argument is the number of tails. So for us, just one tail. Close parentheses, hit enter, and here is our p-value. So let's reduce a couple of these decimals. We see that um, our p-value is uh, less than our alpha, right? alpha was 0.05, our p-value is 0.0411. So clearly we are rejecting HO. And that is our conclusion. We're rejecting the null hypothesis with pretty decent evidence, nothing too strong because the p-value isn't so small compared to alpha. But we're rejecting the null hypothesis and concluding with a decent amount of evidence that yes, in fact, chocolate milk has a, lar a greater mean time to exhaustion than carbohydrate replacement drink. So uh, I don't know what that uh, means to anyone out there. Maybe you need to start drinking chocolate milk before you go on a bike ride or whatever. Okay, so <coughs> I hope this was helpful. Um, Till next time, subscribe, check out the other couple hundred videos, tutorials on my channel, and have a great day.